So I'm Marissa. I'm the owner of Redemption Physical Therapy. Uh, I'm working with Tom right now. Uh, he's coming in for an elbow issue. He is a uh, very high level uh, in the shooting world, right? So he's coming in with an elbow injury, um, likely due to overuse, just based on the, the the habits that he has in the shooting world, right? A lot of gripping, a lot of trigger type stuff, um, a lot of holding. So again, it, overuse of the elbow area. He came to me a couple weeks ago um, when it was very acute it had just started um, and we started with some dry needling just to address that immediately um, we don't want these type of things to become too chronic uh, but again like I said with this tennis elbow it can be a little bit finicky the elbow can be a little bit challenging so he came back today um, we're doing a second session of dry needling again to just promote that long-term changes in the tendon the remodeling process the healing process um, so that he can get back to gripping and holding and shooting um, and and that you know that is his world so that is what we need to get him back to so specificity of training is going to be super important here all right so today we're going to dry needle for tennis elbow or lateral epicondylitis basically um, so we're going to basically be needling primarily into the tendon here and into the muscle group the main concept of needling for you specifically or for this condition specifically, obviously we'll get a pain relief effect. However, that's not my main goal. My main goal is to almost promote a little bit of trauma and bleeding to the tendon. Uh, so the body thinks injury and then starts to send healing agents and all, this, all the blood to that area for healing and remodeling. So that would be primarily what we're gonna do. So the first thing we're gonna do, let's see here. I'm gonna do what's called periosteal pecking right at that insertion site of the tendon onto the bone. And this is uncomfortable for you and the patient, um, but will really promote a lot of bleeding within that tendon, which is gonna really help with well, yeah, and that periosteal pecking is very, it's known for being uncomfortable. Um, I mean, I'm literally creating bleeding um, and I'm pecking to the bone, that's periosteal. So that's, it is, and that's why I only do it, you can see, for about 10 to 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna do one more. So I try to kind of hit the entire insertion area. So we have the bone here, the tendon inserts, but it, you know, it fans out along that insertion. So I try to hit the top, the middle, and then a little bit of this bottom portion to really target that tendon. And I just have your, I'm literally using your bone as a backdrop. <laughs> So that's the worst of it, right? Now these next few needles are gonna go in and stay in. So I'm gonna choose certain areas that I wanna surround and isolate. Needles are gonna go in, they're gonna stay in, and then we are gonna attach the electric to them, which is gonna further promote the blood flow, the healing, and also the pain relief effect. So one area I'm gonna surround is the actual lateral epicondyle where the insertion is. Again, I'm using the bone as my backdrop. Needling to the bone, which freaks a lot of people out. And then the other port I'm going to hit is, so obviously up here is our tendon, it turns into a muscle, right? So our muscle group is our extensors right here. So I would like to hit some of those as well. Got a little twitch there. Definitely felt both of those. Yeah. 
So sometimes we'll get those twitches when there's trigger points or what we call knots in the muscle, you know. Um, trigger points are basically just like a, a ball of trapped chemicals in a sense. So if I hit them with the needle, it helps to release them and normalize the muscle tissue again. So how many sessions normally does it take to repair or something like this? Because we've already done one session and it's 75% better. Yeah. So it's very dependent on the person, the condition, the severity, right? So um, I will say a lot of elbow conditions, they tend to be finicky. Um, so those will, I, I would say elbows will take a few more sessions, maybe four to six. Um, compared to maybe a rotator cuff that might may need two to four, you know what I mean? Um, but like you said, a lot of my people with dry needling, they tend to see responses after the first the first session. That's anecdotally, that is my experience with all this. Do you think, is it mainly just because we used it so much? Like the, the forearm and the, the elbow area is such a, a daily use type of product? Yes. Or? Yes, especially, I mean, when it comes to like tennis elbow and even golfer's elbow on the other side, right, it's it's a very much so overuse injury. You know what I mean? It's not usually a traumatic uh, thing. It's a chronic overuse, especially for someone in your sport. You know, you guys are using your forearms and your and your extensors and, and all that. And even the finger, you know, with the triggers and stuff, that all connects up into the forearm, into the elbow. So, yeah, for, pe for people in your sport, it's 100% overuse. So what exactly are you doing now? Right now I'm spinning the needles. Um, so this one helps to activate some of the receptors that we talked about when it comes to pain relief, but it also kind of spins the fibers of the muscle, the tendon, the tissue, like spaghetti on a fork, which again, freaks people out. Um, but it helps me to hit a bigger surface area. So I have my needle hits one area, but I spin it to hit this bigger surface area so that I can affect more tissue. And you can actually for everybody who doesn't feel this right now, <laughs> you can actually feel the muscle grab it. Like the, yeah. it's it's the craziest thing. It's exactly exactly like that. A spaghetti on a fork is exactly. It's like got it. <laughs> yep, I can feel it too when I'm spinning. Yep. It's not the most comfortable part. You know, that's the, the thing with dry needling when I'm ed educating people on dry needling. The one thing I, I'm very transparent with is it's not extremely uncomfortable. It's not the most, it's not a massage. It's not what time, you're not gonna be relaxing as I'm needling you. Um, but like I said, I do get very good effects with it if you can kind of get past the little bit of discomfort that it's gonna cause. Even the day after, there'll be some discomfort. Um, but that's just because, again, we're, we're creating trauma on a micro level in order to get the body to respond to the injury at hand. So what are you hooking up now? So this is the electric, so it's almost like a TENS unit, you know, which is, you know, people are super familiar with, um, but it's kind of, it's a little more invasive internal, right? Um, so it does the same thing. Once I turn it on, it's going to, you know, hit the electrical signals. It'll hit some of the mechanoreceptors, some of the pain receptors that go to the brain. It helps to stop and block them a little bit. Um, but again, it's going to help pump some blood to the area. I um, mean, it can also can affect some uh, muscle relaxation. You know, I can get the muscle to, to inhibit and turn down a little bit and calm down, um, just depending on what you need with the electric. How do you feel with or without? Do you feel like there's a big difference with and without using yes. the electric? But anecdotally, yes, 100%. And the research has also shown that you get, you get a huge increase in all the effects that I've talked about with the electric. So as long as it's not contraindicated for any reason, which it really, there's, there's only a few cases where it would be, um, you should be using electric when you dry needle because the research says it. Well, yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, like the, you know, this isn't to be mistaken for replacing exercise. Yeah, that, that is still, just like when we pop our backs or we scrape our tissues or we dry needle, like exercise is not to be eliminated from your program in any case, ever. So that's important to note, yeah, for sure. All right, so the first needle you're going to feel, I'm gonna hit around the bone first, okay? Good. Yep. All right. Now we're going to come down into the forearm here. 
So what exactly are we doing now? So obviously I said I'm good. So it's about, kind of up to my pain tolerance. Correct? Yes, yes. So when it comes to the stim, um, I tell people you're going to feel a deep tapping or you might get some actual muscle twitching, which you can literally see. Um, but like you said, subjectively, it should be a strong sensation, um, but not awesome. uncomfortable not uncomfortable, not painful. You're gonna be here for the next 10 to 12 minutes, right? So it has to be something that you can tolerate. And this is not a like, the, the, the more you can take the better. If that is, that's <laughs> not, it's not what, sometimes it is, this is not. This is not the case. It will work even if it, you're a little bit lower than the next person talked about the tennis elbow um, it's primarily an overused thing right so you know last time when you first came to me it was very acute um, so we did the needling to try to calm things down to bring some fresh blood to the area some fresh inflammation because inflammation is not evil we want inflammation for healing right um, so that was day one um, and then like I said we, we did redid the needling process today because it, again it'll take some a couple sessions for full remodeling things are remodeling right now um, but for full remodeling modeling we need you know maybe four to six sessions or so depending on the person um, and then again like we talked about exercise is important so the type of exercises that I'm giving you or that I've given you before um, now we're strengthening right we're doing a lot of eccentric type work wrist extensions um, we're working that same muscle group that is problematic um, because usually with an overuse problem there is some sort of muscle imbalance or some weakness imbalance it wouldn't be overused if it was strong enough to to tolerate the demands of what you're doing right so we have to strengthen it up and we have to be specific about it um, and we have to strengthen it in a way that strengthens the tendon right because that's the problematic area that's the inflammation area so a lot of eccentric or what people call negatives right where we're like lowering we're putting tension on that on that tendon under load that's the type of stuff that strengthens your tendons and that's what's going to basically create long-term outcomes the needling will be more short term until we kind of like cross that barrier into the strengthening, the progressions, and the long-term stuff. So the needling will get us there, but it will not give us long-term outcomes permanently.